Mina Harker's Journal 5th October, 5 p.m. Our meeting for report. Present, Professor van Helsing, Lord Godalming, Dr. Seward, Mr. Quincy Morris, Jonathan Harker, Mina Harker. Dr. van Helsing described what steps were taken during the day to discover on what boat and whither bound Count Dracula made his escape. As I knew that he wanted to get back to Transylvania, I felt sure that he must go by the Danube mouth or by somewhere in the Black Sea, since by that way he come. It was a dreary blank that was before us, omne ignotum pro magnifico, and so with heavy hearts we start to find what ships leave for the Black Sea last night. He was in sailing ship since Madame Mina tell of sails being set. These not so important as to go in your list of the shipping in the times, and so we go by suggestion of Lord Godalming to your Lloyds, where are note of all ships that sail however so small. There we find that only one black sea-bound ship go out with the tide. She is the Sarina Catherine, and she sail from Doolittle's Wharf for Varna, and thence on to other parts and up the Danube. So, said I, this is the ship whereon is the Count. So off we go to Doolittle's Wharf, and there we find a man in an office of wood so small that the men look bigger than the office. From him we inquire of the goings of the Sarina Catherine. He swear much, and he red face and loud of voice, but he good fellow, all the same. And when Quincy give him something from his pocket, which crackle as he roll it up and put it in a so small bag, which he have hid deep in his clothing, he still better fellow, and humble servant to us. He come with us and ask many men who are rough and hot. These be better fellows, too, when they have been no more thirsty. They say much of blood and bloom, and of others which I comprehend not, though I guess what they mean, but nevertheless they tell us all the things which we want to know. They make known to us among them how Last afternoon, at about five o'clock, comes a man so hurry, a tall man, thin and pale, with high nose and teeth so white and eyes that seem to be burning, that he be all in black except that he have a hat of straw which suit not him or the time, that he scatter his money in making quick inquiry as to what ship sails for the Black Sea and for where. Some took him to the office and then to the ship, where he will not go aboard, but halt at shore end of gangplank and ask that the captain come to him. The captain come, when told that he will be pay well and though he swear much at the first he agree to turn. Then the thin man go, and some one tell him where horse and cart can be hired. He go there, and soon he come again, himself driving cart, on which a great box. This he himself lift down, though it take several to put it on truck for the ship. He give much talk to Captain as to how and where his box is to be placed, but the Captain like it not, and swear at him in many tongues, and tell him 
that if you like he can come and see where it shall be. But he say no, that he come not yet, for that he have much to do. Whereupon the captain tell him that he had better be quick with blood, for that his ship will leave the place of blood before the turn of the tide with blood. Then the thin man smile and say that of course he must go when he think fit, but he will be surprised if he go quite so soon. The captain swear again, polyglot, and then the thin man make him bow and thank him and say that he will so far intrude on his kindness as to come aboard before the sailing. Final, the captain more red than ever and in more tongues tell him that he doesn't want no Frenchman with bloom upon them and also with blood in his ship, with blood on her also. And so after asking where there might be close at hand a ship where he might purchase ship forms, he departed. No one knew where he went or Blumin well cared, as they say, for they had something else to think of, well with blood again, for it soon became apparent to all that the Serena Catherine would not sail as was expected. A thin mist began to creep up from the river, and it grew and grew till soon a dense fog enveloped the ship and all around her. The captain swore polyglot, very polyglot, polyglot with bloom and blood, but he could do nothing. The water rose and rose, and he began to fear that he would lose the tide altogether. He was in no friendly mood, when, just at full tide, the thin man came up the gang plank again and asked to see where his box had been stowed. Then the captain replied that he wished that he and his box, old and with much bloom and blood, were in hell. The thin man did not be offended and went down with the mate and saw where it was placed and came up and stood a while on deck in fog. He must have come off by himself, for none notice him. Indeed, they thought not of him, for soon the fog begin to melt away, and all was clear again. My friend, of the thirst and the language that was of bloom and blood, laughed as they told how the captain's swears exceeded even his usual polyglot and was more than ever full of picturesque when on questioning other mariners who were on movement up and down on the river that hour he found that few of them had seen any of fog at all except where it lay round the wharf however the ship went out on the ebb tide and was doubtless by morning far down the river mouth she was by then when they told us, well out to sea. And so, my dear Madam Mina, it is that we have to rest for a time, for our enemy is on the sea with the fog at his command on his way to the Danube mouth. To sail a ship takes time. Go, she never so quick, and when we start... We go on land more quick, and we meet him there. Our best hope is to come on him when in the box between sunrise and sunset, for then he can make no struggle, and we may deal with him as we should. There are days for us in which we can make ready our plan. We know all about where he goes for we have seen the owner of the ship who have shown us invoices and all papers that can be. The box we seek 
is to be landed in Varna and to be given to an agent, one Ristix, who will there present his credentials, and so our merchant friend will have done his part. When he ask if there be any wrong, for that so he can telegraph and have inquiry made at Varna, we say no, for what is to be done is not for police or the customs. It must be done by us alone and in our own way. <laughs>